I was born in this very rural part of Kenya. And my mother and I went back home in this, a water carrier. Because the other available option to take my mother home was this. So you'll all agree with me, the water carrier might have been the best option. My life in the village was very difficult. We would go to school barefoot. We would walk miles in search of clean water. We would work very hard in farms to be able to get food. And situated seven kilometers from any main road, we were sort of disconnected from the rest of the world. But I had this one treasure, I'll call her Queen. Queen was my cousin, Queen was my relative, Queen was my peer, we were just one month apart. And with the difficult village life, life with Queen made that difficult life very beautiful. But when I was eight years old, my father got a job in the city, so all of us had to move to the city. This was a new experience for me. All of a sudden, there was all these opportunities, all this information. I was enrolled in a new school that even had a library. In my life, I had never been to a library before. So all of a sudden, I had the power to dream. I had the power to have a beautiful future. I had the power to go for what I wanted. But Queen wasn't so lucky. The same year, both her parents passed, and she was living with my grandmother in the village. Life was difficult for her. I may never really know what she felt at that particular time, but life was difficult. And it didn't take long before Queen went to get married. When Queen got married, I didn't know whether to be excited, because as women, we are prepared, culturally prepared to look forward to marriage. Marriage is a beautiful thing. So all of us want to get husbands. All of us want to get children. All of us want to live a happy life. So I didn't know whether to be happy that Queen actually had gotten married or to be sad because it was too early in life to get married and she may never understand what she was getting into. But in my heart, I thought she was happy or I wanted to believe she was happy, so I never minded so much about it. I continued with life. There was this whole world ahead of me, and I made very good use of it. I continued with my education, I enrolled to the university, and pursued my career. I joined this organization called Trust for Indigenous Culture and Health, and was in this sexual reproductive health and rights program, where I had the chance to meet girls. I had the chance to create safe spaces for girls to be able to reclaim their power, move from a point of powerlessness to a point of having power, discuss their challenges and find solutions together. I was in this point where I was able to impact the lives of young people. And this sort of changed my life because all of a sudden I had this role model position to be able to uphold. All the girls looked up to me, so I had to make very good choices. I had to be able to live up to their expectations. So I had a path to follow that I had to follow, and I couldn't look at all these other distractions. I work with many girls. I work with girls in primary school. I work with girls in secondary school. I work with girls in the universities. And right now, I'm also doing a boys' program under the Trust for Indigenous Culture and Health, TICA. And with the girls, it's a new experience. The conversations are great. The impact that the conversations have in the lives of the girls are great. They have a power to choose at the end of the day, where they know that I have to analyze what is before me, and from it I have to make a very good decision. We discuss so many things that range from our bodies, how to clean our bodies, relationships, sex, contraceptions, careers, and um, from that we share both high and low moments. And one of our high moments that I wanted to share today is this group of girls. 
they, one of them got married at this age, and she wanted to get married, but the rest of the group couldn't take it. So they collected themselves after school and went to where she was and brought her back to school by force. They told her she had to come back to school. So now that girl has enrolled in school and she's finishing her primary education this year. It means next year she'll go to secondary education. A girl that would have lost to early marriage. But we have also the low moments, like um, one of us whose father was defiling her, and um, she shared this with a social worker. And the social worker went and shared with somebody else. And at the end of the day, the news got back to the father, and the father beat her to death. This is a case that is ongoing, and these are some challenges that we face with the girls. But all in all, we have impacts, and some girls really come out from it really strong and with very cl clear career paths. As I engaged myself in this work, which was very important to me, I all of a sudden realized that I was losing Queen. This happened one Christmas when I went back to the village, and Queen was very pale, Queen was very sad, and Queen was dying. And it dawned on me that I have been giving other girls in the city something that Queen needed most, and I wasn't able to give her. Queen needed a position to be able to make choices, which I wasn't giving her. At that particular time, I sat with Queen down, and we discussed various issues, and I was going to rectify my mistakes. And one of the things I told her is, hang in there. Don't go, because we still have a lot to do. Queen promised to hang in there, and we had phone calls afterwards. But two months later, Queen left. She died. And she died of things that were very preventable. Things that if only I had paid so much attention to her, I would have been able to prevent. She only needed someone to be able to create a safe space for her, so that she's able to make self-healthy and informed choices. She needed somewhere where she could share her fears and she could find solutions to her problems. Something I have been giving to girls in the city, but wasn't able to give this one very important person in my life. Queen needed power. The power that she had deep inside, but she didn't know how to bring it out. The power to be able to make choices. Then I looked around my village and I saw all these queens making the same, taking the same direction that my queen took. And I had failed queen, but I wasn't going to fail these other queens in my village. And that is how the Sister to Sister initiative started. The Sister to Sister initiative is an initiative in my village to be able to give these girls power, to be able to give these girls a chance to dream, because that is lacking. There is no hope, there is no chance to dream, because even when you dream, you will never be able to achieve that dream. I remember I was having a conversation with them about careers, and I asked, what do you want to be in the future? And then they said, I want to be a watchman, I want to be a butcher, and I asked, nobody said I want to be a doctor. Nobody said I want to be a lawyer. Nobody said I want to be. And I asked, why? And they said, don't come and tell us we can be doctors because we can't. Don't come and tell us we can be lawyers because we can't. It all, it's all false. Let us believe something that we can be. So where, why aren't they having this hope? Why aren't they going for bigger dreams? So this initiative, we draw our dreams. We draw our paths. We share our painful experiences, but we also share our brighter future, the dreams that we have in the future. And we create safe spaces for these girls to be able to do that, for these girls to be able to discuss their fears, for these girls to be able to find solutions to some of the challenges they face, and for these girls to feel free 
to, get, to have that power to be able to make safe and healthy choices. And one of the reasons why these girls are not able to uplift their dreams is they have so many challenges that make them drop out of school. Like a girl's basic needs, you need to have a sanitary, you need to have sanitary towels every month, but you can't afford it. So then, if this man promises to buy you sanitary towels every month and expects to get married to you, why wouldn't you say no? Why wouldn't you say yes? So one of the things that we decided to do is teach these girls how to initiate some income-generating activities to be able to buy things like sanitary towels, so that by curbing this problem, we are able to put them in school much longer. So last year, we learned how to make soap, which the girls are now making, and they are selling to the villagers, and they are able to buy things like sanitary towels. They are able to buy things that they need, the basic requirements that they need, and they're able to stay in school. So then what does all this have to do with 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development? One is equal opportunities. If these girls are educated, if these girls are given the chance and the power to make healthy choices, if these girls are given equal opportunities, if these girls have quality education, then they'll be able to go for equal, to go for political, economic, any position that they want. They are able to sustainably, sustainably develop themselves. They are able to equally fight for the resources that we have. But also the failure or success of the SDGs can be seen in my life and Queen's life. I had the power to make a choice to go to school. Queen didn't. I have the power. I had the power to be able to pursue my career, go to the university. Queen didn't. I now have the power to say who I want to get married to, where I want to get married, how many kids I want to have, and what life I want to live. Something that Queen died and able to do. Sometimes I sit down and I say, Queen didn't live life. Life just happened to her. She died without living life. And it all boils down to one thing, choices. If Queen had a chance to hope, if Queen had the opportunity, if Queen was inspired to be able to make a change in her life, if Queen had quality education and support that she needed, she would still be alive today. This is what girls need. Girls need the power and the ability to be able to make safe, healthy and informed choices. Choices about their lives. Choices about when they want to have sex and how they want to have sex. Choices about who they want to have sex with. Choices about whether they want to use contraception or not. It's not about somebody else to come and say girls shouldn't use contraception. It is the girl themselves to see do they want to use contraceptions or not. Just a chance and the power to make safe, healthy and informed choices. If we had started this work earlier, I believe I'll, stand, I'll be standing here with Queen. But as I travel the long mile to be here, as I came here, I know as I stand here, Queen is standing with me because she's the reason why I'm doing this work. So I invite you all to join me to make a change for these girls, to be able to provide them with education. I am we are currently building a library for these girls. A library that will have books, a library that will have internet, the first in the village, so that these girls can be connected to the rest of the world and they can be given power to dream and actually go for these dreams. So join me and the rest of the other people doing very good work like I do to be able to give a chance to these girls, to support them in whichever way you can be a mentor, provide these spaces for them, provide education for them, and together, let's take this very important work to, towards achieving the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. Today, let's take these steps to making life and this world a better place for girls like Queen, whose lives depend on it. 
Thank you very much.